get the other person's paper. Someone makes a decision 
and you personally live your life in Christ. It is that personal commitment to Jesus Christ, but it is being a part of the community. It's being part of the church. You're drawing people to the Orthodox Church. You're drawing people to the body and blood of Christ. So yes, it is a winning of souls. Yes, it is the revival of personal commitment. But where to? Into the body of Christ. Into the church. Because eventually, all of this leads to the chalice. It leads to the body and blood of Christ. You understand? Okay, it eventually leads there. And the next portion is evangelism in the Malang Orthodox Church. And the reason why I have this, even though it seems somewhat disconnected with what I just spoke about, is because I want you to have an understanding that revival of personal commitments and the winning of souls is a part of our history. Okay, it's a part of our history. The missionary activity of Padre de Domingue, uh, he brought many untouchable or lower caste people into the church. Uh, there are mission churches in Chenganur and Pulupali, and Paramahala Tidimini established these churches specifically for the lower caste and the untouchable. And that's not the, a name that I give, but it's a name that India gives its people who are marginalized and who aren't uh, socially, who don't have the social advantages that we Syrian Christians have. And so, in the history of the Malangro Orthodox Church, uh, there has been missionary activity to the lower caste. Then the next one is the Sliba Dasan Samuha, and that is the Society of the Servants of the Cross. Now the Society of the Servants of the Cross, they, it was founded by Patros Marostatios, and he founded that in September 14, 1924 and it gave leadership to missionary activity. And now what Sleva Dobsons do, or Servants of the Cross, what they do is they go door to door. They evangelize. They go to the, the marginalized groups, the, the untouchables. They do the evangelistic work of the church. And so we do have history of young men going out and doing evangelism. Uh, growing up in the church, just like all of you, I didn't know that our church had this type of activity. When I found out that our church has something called the Servants of the Cross, or the Society of the Servants of the Cross, that motivated me to, uh, to understand that our church does have a history of evangelism. Now, the third one is the Mission Society of St. Gregorios of India. Okay, the Mission Society of St. Gregorios of India. Makarios de Domain started that in America. And we do have a mission parish, which is a product of his hard work. And the mission goes out to America, it accepts uh, white people, black people, all types of people to come into the church. So there was mission activity in the North American continent early on, which brought uh, people who aren't, you know, uh, Indian or I guess brown skin or light skin or whatever you want to call it, fair and lovely skin. Uh, <laughs> so there was that type of missionary activity. And when I researched this, uh, this gave me confidence in my church. And so I wanted you to just get a glimpse of that. What we're going to do now is go into the heart of the presentation. And that is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 6 and 11. What I want you to do right now is I want you to uh, just read that to yourself. Okay? gift. 
Every single person in here has a spiritual gift given by God. Now you thought, you heard Father Mesa talk about the dream, right? The dream is not circumstantial, it's not about a situation, but it's the purpose and the plan that God has in your life. Similarly, God has placed within you a gift, and that is a gift of evangelism. But there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but they all come from the same spirit. For example, Georgie will have a different kind of spiritual gift than me, but he can do things that I can't do. I can do things that he can't do. But they all come from the same spirit within the body of Christ. So if you're here and you think that you don't have a spiritual gift, a gift to evangelize, the scriptures say, Jesus Christ himself says, the Apostle Paul says, that you do have a gift. You have the gift of evangelism. But what we are going to do here today, we're going to tap that gift. We're going to try to discover your gift. What is it? What gift do you have that you could witness and be an ambassador for Jesus Christ and be a real evangelist in your high school, in your college, and God willing, even further than that? There are different ways to serve the same Lord, and we can each do different things, right? There are different ways to serve the same Lord, different ways to evangelize, but we can each do different things, different ways to evangelize, but you are the same purpose. You are evangelizing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yet the same God works in all of us and helps us in everything that we do. The different gift that you have, the different gift that you have, the different gift that you have, the different gift that I have, all of it, the same God works in all of us and helps us in everything that we do. It is the Spirit who does all this and decide which gifts to give to each of us. So all of us here have gifts. The Holy Spirit has given you specific gifts, different kinds of gifts. She might not have the same gift as he does, but that's for a specific purpose. Because, as Father Mason was saying, if we all have the same gifts, we won't be productive. Okay? So remember that all of us have a gift inside, a gift inside for evangelism. So every single person here is called to be an evangelist. I want everyone here to say, I am, I am. An, an evangelist. An evangelist. That's true. You are an evangelist. If you think you're not, well, I want you to discover that gift inside of you today. Okay? Let's move to the next slide. There are six styles of evangelism. And if you look on this paper you'll find that. The six styles of evangelism. The six ways to evangelize. The first way is confrontational. That's the first style. And the example to that is Peter. Confrontational is in your face. Right? I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think about me or I don't care what you think about the message that I'm giving. It's confrontational. It's in your face. And the example of that is Peter. Peter standing in front of the thousands after he received the Holy Spirit. He was not afraid. He was not wondering what the people thought about him. He had to proclaim a message. And he was going to proclaim that message no matter what. And he was going to go to the ends of, earth, of the earth to accomplish his mission. So it's confrontational. It's in your face. It's telling you like it is. Okay, there's no regard for persons. There's no fear inside of what you might think of me. I'm going to rush in like a bull and attack because that is what Jesus Christ has called me to do. And so the person uh, that is the example of confrontational evangelism is Peter. Standing up and preaching the word of God without compromise. And it's a direct gospel message. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through Him. Do you believe? That type of evangelism is hardcore. It's, it's straight up in your face evangelism. The second one is intellectual. It's intellectual evangelism. Intellectual evangelism is what the Apostle Paul did. The Apostle Paul went to the synagogue and he opened up the scriptures and he tried to prove to the Jews 
that Jesus Christ was indeed the Messiah foretold in the Law, the Psalms, and the Prophets. He went to Athens. He went to Greece. And he said, you know that unknown God that you're talking about? Well, that's Jesus Christ. He disputed in the arena. He stood up on Mars Hill and he defended the faith. He was really the first apologist of the Christian faith. And he, his type of engagement wasn't confrontational. It was intellectual. He debated with you. He argued with you. He thought about what you were thinking, and then he brought another type of um, solution. So it was an intellectual type of debate. It was an intellectual type of evangelism. And so that's the Apostle Paul. Testimonial, which is the next one, is like the blind man. And that's, you know, you can see the scripture verses, can't you? So you can write that down as well. The blind man. You know, when Jesus healed the blind man, uh, the scribes and Pharisees, you know, the religious people of that time, they came and asked the blind man, you know, who healed you? You know, weren't you that blind man that was sitting there? And he goes, yes, I was that blind man that was sitting there. But now I can see. I was blind before, but now I can see. And so his type of evangelism is testimonial. You know, it's not intellectual. It's not confrontational. It's not in your face. But it is just this is what Jesus Christ did for me. This is what Jesus did for me. I was blind, but yet now I see. Do you see the miracle in my life? Do you see that my life is a miracle? Well, that's the witness. That's the evangelism in my life. So that's a testimonial type of evangelism. The next is the interpersonal. And that's Matthew, the tax collector. You wouldn't think that Matthew, out of all the apostles, would be the one who would have that interpersonal type of uh, evangelism. But he was. You know, once he converted to Jesus Christ, uh, he loved Jesus Christ so much that he wanted all his friends to hear, so he brought them in and wanted them to hear what Jesus had to say. So he invited them to a banquet. He wanted to develop a relationship with them. So it has Interpersonal evangelism has everything to do with relationship. Invitation. It's like the Samaritan woman who's sitting at the well of Jesus. She encounters Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ encounters her. She receives the living water, which is Christ himself. And then she goes out back to her community. And what does she say? Hey, you got to come and meet the person that I just talked to. You have to come and meet Jesus Christ. She became a believer. When you become a believer in Jesus Christ, you can't keep this stuff to yourself. If, if you can't keep all this stuff to yourself, then I would say that you need to grow in your Christianity because it's supposed to burst out. It's supposed to be a fire inside of you, a passion inside of you that you have to tell someone else, or it, it is a particular style that you use in evangelism. But invitational is you invite the people to come and to listen to Jesus Christ. You invite them to your church. You invite them to your prayer meeting. You invite them to the retreat. You invite them to the conference. You invite them. Hey, you come and see what I've been experiencing. If it's good enough for you, then it's good enough for your friends and the people who don't know Christ. Okay, the next one is service. And I think... A lot of us have been involved in service. The example of that is Dorcas. Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 42. Dorcas uh, prematurely died, but she was a strong believer in Christ. Not only was she a strong believer in Christ, but she did a lot of service for the poor and for the marginalized. And when she died, Peter brought her back to life. And so she's an example of service-type evangelism. And many of you have been involved in that type of evangelism. Maybe that is what God has called you to do. But whatever it might be, God has called you to one of these types or styles of evangelism. So there is no one in here that can say, I am not an evangelist. Because every single person here has a gift from God to evangelize. Every single person. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to go into each of those styles. 
we confronted the Bible uh, saints, and we saw how they're an example of that stuff. Now we're going to confront priests, deacons, lay people that are living now who are uh, evangelizing in our church. So go to the first one. It's confrontational, right? I talked about Peter confessing before the other disciples that Jesus is the Son of God, right? Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Son of God. Peter was always the first one to get in your face and tell everyone what he felt. I always think that I have a confrontational style of evangelism. But that's always, but that's not something that I, I guess I want it, but it's something God has given to me. And so that's what I have to use. I have a confrontational style of evangelism. Acts chapter 2, I talked about that already. Peter stands in front of the crowd after Pentecost, and an ordinary man becomes extraordinary, right? Maximus, Father Maximus, the Orthodox evangelist, uh, he has a uh, ministry called Gospel to All Nations. He goes around all over the world evangelizing, and you know, he cut down the lights. Uh, this is Father Evangelist, uh, Father Maximus, he's the Orthodox evangelist, and you can see that he's standing in front of a crowd, and uh, he's bringing people to personal commitment to Jesus Christ, and he's winning people over to the Orthodox faith. And I, I have a video clip of him uh, preaching. Sometimes you won't watch the whole thing. Okay. 
people go to heaven, I must be going to heaven. They never really ask themselves what standard they're using to declare themselves to be good. And they never then really ask themselves if they're using the same standard that God is using. It's just this kind of bad thing, not good, heaven is good, I must be going there. So I just like to remind people whenever I can that hell's out there. It is an option. And it's an option that has to be dealt with, and you're not simply naturally going to heaven. Nobody just wakes up and naturally going to heaven. No, I seen how. Have I seen it? Yeah, no, I've yeah. never been there, fortunately. Why do you ask? And how do we know that it's out there? Because God has told us, and God has seen it. And you talk to God? Uh, I tried to. Don't you? Why not? I don't believe you God. Do you know that he does not exist? No. Wouldn't it be a good idea to find that? It would be a good idea to find out if there was a means of doing so. Do you think there is a means of doing so? No. Why not? Because nobody has been able to find solid proof. It's because you've been taught to think uh, by the Enlightenment. You're a product of the Enlightenment. That's how you've been taught to think, and that's why you can't find God. The Enlightenment said the only knowledge we can have is what name can be enacted. They leave God out of it. Yeah, the only way we can know who God is is if God reveals himself. Now, God is obviously able to reveal himself. Um, but if you're going to say, no, that can't happen because I'm a product of the Enlightenment, and the Enlightenment tells me that the only thing I can know is what I reason out to, then you're going to cut yourself off to from God. But I don't consider I'm cutting myself off to God. Like, I don't see, I've been having long enough to know that if somebody doesn't want to seek after God, there's a thousand excuses. You know, just pick one and go with it. Uh, if somebody does want to seek after God, nothing can stop them from seeking because that's what they want to do. If you don't want to seek out from God, pick one of the thousand excuses that are out there and be happy. And if you do want to seek after God, then do it. You don't, have to, you, know, you don't have to convince me that you don't want to. You don't have to convince yourself that you want to. To say, that, to say that if God exists, I mean, if he is unable to make himself known to man, would be silly. I and mean, how can God create a universe, create intelligent beings, and then not be able to uh, let these... there is an intellectual style of evangelism, okay? And he's Gary the Willard Preacher. His story is that he was once an atheist and he converted to Pentecostalism and one day when he was on the, at the steps of the Willard Building preaching, an Orthodox student asked him, do you know about Orthodoxy? And he said, I have no idea what that is. And so he went and researched Orthodoxy. For one year he was searching for the true faith. And finally, he came to the Orthodox Church. He was baptized into the Orthodox Church in America. And my friends still, still who are there, uh, living in the area of State College, and my friends that I still keep in touch with, they were atheist agnostics that were converted by him. And so, this type of evangelism does go on in the Orthodox Church. We're not, it's not absent from our church. It's not something that happens only in the Protestant Church. It happens in our church. So, has God given you the ability to write, research, express your thoughts on a high intellectual level? Maybe he has. So, I want you to go and check that off if any of that applies to you. The space where it says intellectual. Okay? If it doesn't apply, then you don't have to check it off. Okay, the next one. The next style is testimonial. It deals with, just like the blind man when he was asked, I was blind, but now I see. And so it is merely, it's a, test, it's a testimonial. It's telling others of what God has done in your life. Okay? And so that's important for Orthodox Christians. Because I think as Orthodox Christians, we shy away from testimonies. Do you know why? Because we don't, really don't have one. And we often think that testimonials 
are things that other people do, other denominations. But we are the church that has experience, who can, we can experience Christ in the liturgy. We can experience Christ through the sacraments. So my question to you today is, do you have a testimony of what God has done in your life? What has God done in your life? That if someone came up to you and said, hey, what's God done in your life? You can tell them. How has God impacted your life? How has God moved in your life? And then you're not going to sit there and try to figure it out, try to figure out an answer, but you'll give the answer, you'll give your testimony. God will work inside many of you here today, through sickness, through illness, through relationships, through trials and tribulations, to give you a testimonial. And you're going to use that testimonial to be an evangelist for Jesus Christ. Father Giverghis John, that's his house name that starts with a V. His official name is Father Giverghis John. And uh, he's from India. He has a ministry called Sugada Ministries. It's a ministry that is based in India. Now, his style of preaching is testimonial. It's not confrontational. It's not intellectual. It's testimonial. He tells you his experiences, how he was ordained uh, the day after his mother died and his mother's casket was right there outside the altar. And so that brings people uh, to his message. It gives them an understanding of how Christ can uh, bring you out of situations, trials and tribulations. So he has a testimonial style of evangelism. And this is probably something that God is working inside of you. And I wanted to show you a clip of one of his sermons. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted you to get a taste of what he does. He's a very good preacher. He's brought a lot of people closer to Christ through his Sugada ministries. Not only that, a lot of people have been healed. A lot of people have been healed. And it's a true healing from God in the true faith. And so, what's your testimony, friends? What has Jesus done for you uh, that you can tell people about? Not going to a conference and not going to a retreat. But what has God done for you that you can tell other people with boldness and, and, and just tell them what God has done in your life to change you? And so that's the testimonial type. The next is interpersonal. We talked about Matt. Well, in our own church, MJOCSM tries to uh, do a lot of that interpersonal relationship type of evangelism. The counseling program, which I know is in the Southwest Diocese, and I know that we are trying to start something in the Northeast Diocese. And so that type of evangelism is something that we are used to, that we, ha we have that. But do you feel comfortable developing relationships with people to bring them closer to Christ? Do you have the ability to counsel and talk to people when they are facing trials and tribulations? Do you find yourself in that position sometimes? Just think about it, right? You don't have to be an evangelist by standing in front of the crowd. You can be an evangelist by having a relationship with someone and talking to them and bringing them closer to Christ through your relationship. Relationships are very, very, very important. You can be a destructive influence or you can be a positive influence on someone else. God has called all of you, and I think many of us can do this. Do you agree with me that you can do this type of evangelism? That you can develop relationships with, with your friends and you can bring them closer to Christ through the things that they are going through. You can witness what God has done for you and what God can do for someone else through the relationships that you develop. Okay, so this is an interpersonal, right? Interpersonal. It's personal. It's between you and someone else. I find myself doing that type of evangelism a lot because I'm a priest, okay? And so people come up to me and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. 
Okay, well, let's see what, what, what are you going through. Okay, let's see what the Bible says. Okay, let's see what you can do to uh, stop right now. Let's see what you can do to uh, overcome this. So you, that's an interpersonal type of evangelism. Okay? The, okay, go to the next one. So for the last two, testimonial and interpersonal, if you think any of that applies to you, go check it out. Okay? If it doesn't apply, go check it out. If none of these apply, then don't worry about it either. You'll discover that when, you, when you're growing in Christ. The more you come to love Jesus Christ, the more you discover what He wants to do in your life. Okay, the next one is invitation. It's invitation. And we talked about the Samaritan woman, and we're not going to go through that again. But invitational is bringing people to the church, inviting them. Hey, there's a prayer meeting. Hey, there's a Bible study to invite them. You know, I have my own Bible studies uh, in Philadelphia and around that area. And one of the things that I stress with the people in my ministry team, we have the Fox Ministries, is that we should invite people to come. Be warm. Be welcoming. Be compassionate. Be a church that is open to every single person. You know, so often what I see in the church is this ego. This ego that we are the Orthodox Church. We are this great community that has everything together. But if you really look inside uh, ourselves, we have a lot of issues. We have a lot of problems. And our church should be a hospital. A hospital that invites the spiritually sick, the spiritually downtrodden, the people who are having spiritual problems. And so it should be, uh, it should be a church that invites Everybody. It should be a church that invites, and it's a place of healing. The church is a hospital, a place of healing. So that type of evangelism is something that our church has to do. You know, do you invite others to experience the rich, orthodox, liturgical tradition of our church? Do you invite people to experience what you've experienced? You tell them about the icons. It's nice to meet them. Right? You tell them about uh, the liturgy. That's nice. You tell them about the incense. Nice. Tell them about what you experience in church, all the good things that you experience in church. And that's an invitation. And I know that we have practical issues. Look, our church is very Malayali, and if you invite uh, someone that is not Malayali, it's very hard to incorporate that person, even if that person wants to become an Orthodox Christian. Nevertheless, this is the goal, right? This is the dream of our church. That one day our church will open its doors and become the church of evangelism. It will open its doors to white, black, everyone. And say, hey, this is your church. And finally we can become that real and true American church. That Orthodox church that invites everyone and welcomes everyone. And so, if your style is invitational, that's something that you have to discover. Go to that part, and if, that, if there's anything that applies to you, you can check that off right now as well. Okay. And the next one is service. Okay. So the next one is service. And I think this is something that everyone does. Tomorrow we're going to have the presentation of MGOC submission. And this is the way you can be an evangelist. How many of you have gone on MGOC submission? Okay, everyone, keep your hands up. Okay, all of you were evangelists, right? So, keep your hands up. <coughs> you can be an evangelist by serving. You can be an evangelist by serving. Mother Teresa, we heard her name over and over and over again this, in this conference. She wasn't confrontational. She wasn't intellectual. And I don't know if she was had a testimonial style of evangelism. But she had the evangelism of service. Do you want to serve others and share in their suffering? If you're willing to do that, if you have a heart for other people, if you have a compassionate heart, a heart to serve others, then you have that style of evangelism. You know, I always say that, you know, my style is confrontational, and I always wondered what, what type of evangelism my wife would do. Uh, you know, I thought she never had. A, 
any type of evangelistic style. But you know, when people come over our house, she's very uh, warm, welcoming, she's very hospitable. She has the gift of hospitality. And that is a style of evangelism, a style of service. And so many of you have been part of soup kitchens and uh, service projects that your NGO system has done in your area. That's a type of evangelism, okay? And what you have to do is do more. Maybe go into the inner city, and I'll give you some of the recommendations that I have for the church uh, in the later segment. So if you want to serve others and share in their suffering, you have a heart for the poor and the suffering, you have a compassionate heart, so maybe this is your style of evangelism. If it is, I want you to check that out, okay? So go ahead. Do that right now if, uh, if that applies to you. If it doesn't apply to you, then don't... Uh, Check it out, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch gears different than what I did in my last segment, although this is the exact same presentation. I want us to share, okay? I want us to share. Before we can go into the recommendations, if we have time, we can do that. Okay, so I'm going to open it up if you're willing to share. How many of you uh, have a lot of things checked off on the intellectual part? Oh, sorry, the computational. Raise your hand if you think you're confrontational. If your style is confrontational. Just raise your hand, don't be scared. If you're confrontational, you should be scared. <laughs> okay, just raise your hand. Okay, why do you think Josh used this confrontation? Yeah, why do you think it was confrontational? Um, I feel like uh, the events that happened in my life came to happen to 
Invitational today? Huh? Which invitational today in the cafeteria? Oh, yeah. Me and Solomon, we're talking to the. Uh, Can you be louder? Oh, yeah. Me and Solomon today, we were talking to. Uh, I forgot what they were, but they're like Amish. Huh? Yeah, well, they, they came to us and they're like, what are you guys? And we just like, we're Orthodox. Uh, huh? We're like uh, Indian Orthodox. I can't listen to two people at once. We told them we're Indian Orthodox and they kept asking us questions. Why do you do this? Why do girls cover their. And um, what do you guys believe in? Um, and we just told them uh, about Mother Mary. She's, uh, we uh, they try to be like her, and about the bishops. And we invited them to come to our prayer this evening. It's okay to look here, right? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you already. <laughs> okay, that's invitational type of evangelism. Okay, anyone else? Okay, let's do the last one. Serving. Serving. Who has a serving style of evangelism? Okay. All right. So we, I, I see that we have uh, it's crossing over here. Uh, so let's go ahead. Um, like after I do like business, I just like to give like really happy. Whatever your gift is, 
God is willing to develop it if you will discover it and you know bring it out of yourself and live for Christ and live for Jesus. Okay?